Today I'm going to take a look at the line to Brixton Station at the southern end of the Victoria Line. Brixton is one of the newer stations on the underground, and by newer I mean it was built in 1971. This in itself is kind of weird. Brixton is a major suburb, and it has been since the mid-Victorian era. Yet it didn't get a tube station until after the Beatles broke up. Not that Brixton was without a rail connection. In 1862, Brixton's railway station was opened by the London Chatham and Dover Railway. Back then, the London terminus was Moorgate in the city, but now it's Victoria. Which means that both the tube line and the railway line run into Victoria by different routes. Brixton is in South London, and in terms of Victorian public transport, that means it was tram country. Trams could offer cheaper fares than trains and a more frequent service, taking advantage of the less busy streets of the suburbs. In 1892, an unusual cable-hauled tram route opened from Kennington up Brixton Hill, and you can still see the depot near Oval Station. Trams were hugely successful, and you had to be pretty brave or pretty stupid to compete with them. Nevertheless, in 1897, a proposal was put forward that would have seen Brixton added to the tube map. 1890 had seen the City and South London Railway open, the first deep-level electric tube line from Stockwell to King William Street in the city. The 1897 proposal was the City and Brixton Railway, which would have reused some abandoned City and South London tunnels, and run through South London to Brixton. Aside from the section between Oval and Brixton, the whole thing would have basically duplicated the City and South London Railway. And my personal theory is that it was mostly intended as a gamble to compete with the cable tram. Well, we'll never find out if the gamble would have paid off, because money couldn't be raised and the whole thing collapsed. The City and South London Railway bought the City and Brixton out in 1902, complete with the authorisation to build a line to Brixton. But they didn't do anything with it. The next proposal for a tube station in Brixton, or at least the next one I'm aware of, came after the Second World War. London's railways, both mainline and underground, were badly overcrowded, and there was a desperate need for more capacity on the lines in South London. One idea to relieve the congestion was to extend the Bakerloo line from Elephant and Castle to Brixton. There have been literally dozens of proposals for extending the Bakerloo line into South East London over the past century and a bit, but this one actually received parliamentary authorisation. It didn't happen, but that's because something else was in the works. This something was the Victoria Line. The Victoria Line had a long process of evolution, beginning in the 1930s. What was certain was that it would run across London, taking pressure off the Circle Line, likely between King's Cross and Victoria. But then what? There were various ideas for where it would go from there. One possibility was to Wimbledon, via Chelsea and Fulham. Another was Croydon, and this would include a station at Brixton. The big question was, which of these was more urgent? The government, London Transport and British Rail kept changing their minds. Then there was the question of money. There wasn't much available in the 1950s when these schemes were being bounced around. So if they were going to build a line, it had better be the right one. The lack of money was also the reason the Bakerloo line extension was shelved. In the end, it was decided to only go as far as Victoria, and figure out where to go from there. At some point. The Victoria Line opened in 1968, and was, at the time, something new and exciting. It was the first completely new tube line in over half a century. It had the streamlined, automatic, ultra-modern 1967 stock trains. And it was blue, which was seen as quite a futuristic colour in the 60s. I don't know why. All this masked the fact that the line had been built on a budget. The new stations were small and basic, and would soon prove inadequate. And by 1968, both the Wimbledon and Croydon extensions had been abandoned. A 1958 report declared that they wouldn't justify the cost of building them, arguing that suburban rail traffic had stagnated. This had been the death of many potential rail projects, and the people in charge always end up regretting it, but oh well, hindsight is 2020. In 1965, the Passenger Transport Planning Committee for London produced a new report, putting forward the case for a truncated extension as far as Brixton, calling along the way at Stockwell and Vauxhall. 
The argument was that this would take pressure off the severely overcrowded Northern Line and advances in tunnel construction technology meant that it would be relatively cheap. There was also an idea for a station between Victoria and the river, but this was abandoned early on. The plan was rushed through, receiving parliamentary approval in 1967. Given how slow rail projects move, this seems remarkably quick. That was for two reasons. Firstly, to take advantage of the equipment and personnel already working on the main body of the Victoria Line. And secondly, because it looked like the government were about to loosen the purse strings. If London Transport could present something solid to Parliament, they could be in line for an infrastructure grant. Which they got. On the 23rd of July 1971, the Brixton extension opened. Notably, it doesn't offer any direct interchange with any of the railways running through the town due to the difficulty of integrating lines on viaducts with the deep level tube. What, do you think London Transport was made of money? There was one final addition. The station between Victoria and the river. There was a vociferous local campaign to get this built. The Crown Estates, landowners of much of the property in this area, granted permission for a station to be built. These two factors caused London Transport to reconsider the idea. On the 14th of September 1972, Pimlico Station opened. The Brixton extension was advertised with posters depicting it as a jigsaw puzzle piece, and that really is how it feels these days. Brixton is an important part of London, economically and culturally. The idea that it might not have been on the tube map at all sounds weird in the context of modern London. Maps of the early Victoria Line look incomplete. Nevertheless, it took more than 70 years to finish this particular puzzle. Well, I hope you enjoyed this extensive tale from the Tube. If so, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I would like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon for your always generous support. You are the unnamed station between Victoria and the river to my Brixton extension. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the Tube.